On today's episode of Gathering the Kings. Talk to your employees. You'll find out everything you need to know about your business from them and exactly. facilitate a culture in which they're okay talking to you. You are listening to Gathering the Kings with Chaz Wolf, featuring fellow seven, eight, and even nine figure business owners who have real battle scars from business and life, but have prevailed as the king that they are designed to be. We welcome high-performing entrepreneurs to the stage in order to reveal the real of the real on what it takes to build a successful business today. We dissect the good and bad decisions they've made along the way that give a true and accurate picture of the journey of success and how you too can get there. Through this dialogue, you will learn the value of growing your network and surrounding yourself with power players and kings like today's guest. Grab your pen and notebook because we're about to dive in. What's up, everybody? I'm Chaz Wolf, Gathering the Kings podcast. Today, I've got William Bocast here on the King stage. My brother, how are you? I'm doing fantastic, man. Bro, how, 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 how did I butcher that last name on that? No, you actually got it perfect, man. Uh, just had a wonderful glass of Colgan water to start the day, of course. And of course. Uh, some, some coffee made with uh, Colgan water, you know, so promoting the brand shamelessly. Yeah excited to have you here man um i just realized right right when i hit the record button that i hadn't asked you about your name and it's it's always the ones that i don't ask ahead of time where i'm like oh no but you're saying i did it so that's great um i'm excited to hear your business story man i'm excited to get to know you here you obviously have already kind of hinted at what kind of business that you're in but for clarity's sake what kind of business do you own brother Oh, yeah. So I own a Colgan water dealership here in Chico, California. We serve a huge area. Uh, if, you're, if you're familiar with California, so we go down almost to Sacramento, then all the way up to the Oregon border. So huge track of land, helping people with their water, helping people with their problems. Um, that's what I say we do, man. You've got a water problem. We have a water solution. So whether that that water smells wrong, it has the wrong color to it, it's got hard minerals in it and it ruins all the things in your house you know what we do is we we know all these problems we've dedicated to solving these problems and so we can walk to someone's house and give them a fantastic solution solve all these problems and make their life better so we're a problem solver yeah i love that as uh, as all business owners are and uh, so that's why you and i are gonna we're gonna unwind a few things that you've done over the years that uh, hopefully can help the listener um, before we get started in your journey, though, I want to know, um, you're a young guy, we've talked, we've, we've both got young kids, um, and we've talked business, we've talked family, we've talked energy, but like, why are you doing this, man? Why, why, why do you push as hard as you do? What's, what's the bigger play for you? Because it's fun. It's enjoyable, uh, you know, building and growing and doing all these things. And uh, to me, it's about success for a couple of different factors. You know, I didn't grow up with the most stuff as a sure. kid. And so for me, you know, I think selfishly kind of some in the beginning was like, I need to build this so my kids can have more opportunity than I did, which is a story. And I mean, I think a lot of business owners have, you know, you want to, you want to build that success. So my kids can have that success as well. And it kind of actually morphed too into a thing of, I want that same success for my employees. Yeah. And I want to build a culture and I want to build a place where everyone loves coming to work every day which is really, really hard to do because yeah. it, there's going to be bad days at work. There's bad days, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, no matter how much you love your job. So, That's right. you know, throwing that out kind of out the window, but I wanted to build a place that I love to come to work, right? Cause that's one of the great things you can do as a business owner is you can make the culture, whatever you want it to be. Right. So why not make it the best culture out there? Right. Make it the place everybody wants to work at. Make it the place where people come into work. Gosh, you know, we, we had a guy, we call him the singing salesman because he, every time he came into work, he's singing. I got a guy, you know, I got some texts and stuff that come in and they just light up your life, the customer's life, the other employee's life because they love being here. Got, yeah. got a guy, I can't tell him what time to come in the morning because no matter what, he's here sooner than that because yeah. he just can't wait to get to work. And so you embrace wow. that mentality. And so for me, what I can do an opportunity I've been given is I can turn and give them success as well. Yeah. And yeah. so it's all about teaching them, getting them to grow, be better, push themselves. You know, when they're in uncomfortable situations, how do we deal with that? Be comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's yeah. always a fun one, right? So um, what I want to do is just pass on what I've learned, what I'm learning still, 
Yeah. And to be able to help people also be more successful. And so to me, that it translated from not just my family alone, but to my employees. And so that's the number two reason. Probably number three is I want to help my community. Um, yeah. Water treatment isn't easy. It requ- I've been in an industry 15 years and I'm still learning. Wow. And uh, it's a, just a uh, really difficult market. There's tons of things on the internet. You know, yeah. that are true, not true, this, that company's right. trying to sell you stuff. And I don't want to sell anybody anything. You know, I'm on education. That's our primary focus is educating our customer. And so that's what we do. We that's educate cool. them and then they can make a decision. Do they want to be a Colgan customer or do they want to go somewhere else? If they go somewhere else, I'll still help them because I'm about building relationships. Yeah. And that's number three. I want to build relationships with people, my customers and um Take care of the community. Money's the money's the last thing. If you do, I think right. if you do these things first, the money will come. The success yeah. will come. But if you're more focused on on the numbers as opposed to what the culture and what the feeling and what the and community environment's telling you, um, yeah. it, sometimes it gets lost. Yeah, hundred percent. And I I agree completely. Um, and it's like you took a took the play or the playbook right right from a, a page in in uh, Gathering the Kings because. We talk about this transition from warrior to king, warrior being obviously selfish and and you can, you have to survive the literal battle. That's okay. There's a period of time where you have to do that in order to grow the business. But at some point, there has to be a bigger perspective. And it's about buying your time back for your family. It's about pouring into your team. It's about pouring into your community because that's the perspective of a king, right? It's it's the weight of the crown, if you will. It's the it's the all this stuff happening all at the same time, all the way around me. And it's okay that all these people are counting on me because this is kind of what we're made for. And when you said it's fun, I get to go after it. It doesn't mean necessarily that there aren't challenges, right? We're going to get into some of those, but it's what you're designed for. You've, you've water bottles or no water bottles. You you're designed <laughs> for this man. Um, yeah. And so I think that uh, we had a little bit of fun talking about that uh, before we hit the record button, but it, it's, it's, it's who we are. We would be doing this no matter the widget. Um, and so I appreciate you sharing. I want to get into your story just a little bit. How did yeah. you get, how did you get into the water treatment business? How did you even become a business owner? Give us a little bit of the, the beginnings. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I didn't start into this business, even thinking or knowing about owning what have you. Uh, I got into it just by, I was working two jobs. I was kind of going on and off school. I didn't really, I thought I knew what I wanted to do. Didn't know what I wanted to do. Sure. Um, and then um, heard the grapevine from some friends that they were hiring over at Colgan for a route delivery driver. So I was a manager at a subway, you know, doing make baking bread, making sandwiches, doing this, that, the other thing. And it's like, yeah. hey, we're looking for a route delivery driver, which is delivering 40 pound bags of salt, driving a big F550 around, um, very different job. And so I was like, well, there's nowhere to go in the food industry. So I took a pay cut you know, to come take this job, started off delivering salt, doing that. And I did that for a couple of years, um, worked my way up, became a service technician. So that way I could work on equipment, work on treatment equipment, residential, commercial, fix water softeners and water filters and whole health systems, the commercial things. So I learned how to fix stuff and problem solve. And uh, from there, I learned installation. So I got involved in installation department. I got involved in the warehouse. Um, So I was kind of working, 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 but I still had this education's important yeah i think i got that kind of from my mom and so i was going to night classes i was doing this and then i suddenly was just like what if i just commit to something like i'll commit to school i'll commit to this i'm gonna commit to um these things and so um i worked for a guy one of our customers actually um and doing agriculture okay so a, Com- a complete well, left turn. Complete, yeah. So <laughs> while I'm working at Colgan, right, one of the guys working here was working weekends for him. And he came okay. and talked to me and he's like, hey man, this I'm doing this for this guy's weekend. It's really hard work. I'm working out in the fields. I'm doing this. And I'm like, that sounds like fun. Can you give me his number? I'd like to call him up and see if I can get a job. So I called him up, negotiated a, a career, a job, and I started working for this guy. And what was so cool about this is I saw a guy, he didn't have to, he had an amateur orchard which we call them Ammons. It's what we call sure. around here. Yeah. But uh, he worked, had an almond orchard. And uh, so I ended up helping him with that. We did a bunch of different projects around, but this dude loved going to work every day. He didn't have to, he didn't yeah. have to go work out in the orchards and do this, but he wanted to. And I looked at that and I was like, 
I want something here. I want yeah. this. And I thought it was an agriculture. So got it. With so I was like, I'm going back to school, gonna get a degree, ag business. And uh, you know, that's what I want to do. Something in agriculture. That fire lit me up that I could see somebody have. So I can't, I'm working at Colgan at the same time. And so I started going to more night classes, but now I have a direction. I want to transfer to the university here, get a four-year degree. Sure. And uh, so I took uh, two accounting classes at the same time. And I did special permission. No one's ever done it. Teachers told me, pick one, you're going to fail it. No one can pass both at the same time, right? <laughs> I had the highest grade in both classes. Wow. That's because devote yourself to it. No regrets. Yeah. I don't want to look back and go, what if I did a little bit better? What if yeah, I worked sure. a little bit harder? You don't want to lose Lay those it all out on the field, as they say. Exactly. So I was braggadocious to the owners at the time that, hey, I did this thing. I passed both classes. And they're like, interesting. Our accounts receivable person just quit. Yeah. You want to work in the office and do like accounting stuff. And I'm like, well, sure. And at that time, we didn't have anybody with any tech knowledge in the office. So we okay. couldn't offer a tech support line. Well, here you go. This guy that's you know, been working in the company for all these years. Now I'm in the office and I can, I mean, I had to figure out how to use the phone and the software and all stuff. But now I was thrust into this, hey, I can answer people's questions because I've worked on it. I built it, it and fixed yeah. it. I can advise people that walk in the door. And now I became an expert in this. So fast forward, again, I'm getting my degree. I took 25 units my last semester because I'm crazy. 4.0, <laughs> top of my class, you know, if you got to do it, you do it, right? You got to do it right. Do it, you so do it. right. Uh, I had two job opportunities. One was here at Cole again as the operations manager. I had a second one for USDA. Okay. They wanted me for a couple of different things. So my mom, and her, she's like, you got to go for USDA. It's a guaranteed job, going to have great benefits, blah, right. the rest of that thing. But right. with Cole again came a caveat. Okay. That if I stayed on and I helped them build their business and then pay off their debts, I get first shot at buying that business. Mm. And that was like the crossroads in your life, right? Do you take the uh -huh. easy road, the safe. USDA government safe job and have the white picket fence and the, you know, right. the simple, or do you dive into that chaos on the other side? Uh, and so uh -huh. I was like, I'm going for it. I'm going, I'm going <laughs> for the chaos, man. You know, I, I, to me, it just, it seemed more fun. And I didn't want to leave something on the table because USDA was always there. As a backup. Yeah. So I jumped totally. in the call again, uh, became the operations manager, then uh, had to become the sales manager. So I had to learn about sales. Um, You've been in every and, department, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I walked in, and this is the thing for me is I walked in, you know, with a degree in business, thinking I knew what I was doing. I would talk about mistakes. Here's the biggest mistake ever. And so I did things the way you're supposed to do it, the way I thought things were, the way the management class told you to do it. Sure. It didn't work. It, did, it failed. And okay. so what I decided was like, what if you do everything the exact opposite of what everybody else is doing? Like the exact opposite. Yes. Do it. Don't do it the same. Do it the other way. And do you know what happened? Ding. Success. Start okay. So, so, potential. so tell us, give, give us some, give us some practicals here. We're, we're all on the edge of our seat going, okay, yeah. what does that mean? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So um, we talk about motivation. Motivating okay. people, right? Yeah. Most companies, most, you know, you have that mid-level manager who hands out write-ups, hands out disciplinary, you know, shuts people down. Okay. And when you shut people down that way, they're scared to go be successful because they're scared of the repercussions. Sure. But what if you ignore all those, basically, right? There's some things you have to talk to people about. Yeah. But what yeah. if you just celebrate the success? Just look at the positive, build on the positive, give them tools to be more positive. Give them the things they need to be. Instead of, you know, harping on someone for being late every day, find out why they're late. See if you can help them. See if you can help right. them build a trend to be more successful. Yeah. Let them be, that. give them the tools, right? I say, yeah. you know, life, you have a tool belt and you're given tools and you can choose to put in your tool belt. You can choose to throw it on the ground. But if you've got it in your tool belt, you can use it again and again, and you can build and you can make better tools on your tool belt so you can go and be more successful. Sure. And I think that's when things started to change. Also, like I said before, always be the dumbest person in the room. Just learn. Just whatever. If everyone's out there. You know, there's some fantastic resources. Just listen, learn. Don't be too co committed to one of your own ideas. Yeah, that's good. You know, um, for 
for us, we have a bunch of different departments, right? We've got a service department that's working on stuff. We've got an installation department. We've got a route department. We've got, you know, people in the office answering phones. Well, if I'm going to change something for my route deliveries driver, a driver's job, right? Yeah. I better bring him in on it. Yeah. <laughs> and I better let him think it's a good idea because if I just tell him, hey, I need you to do X, Y, Z now. Right, right. They're only going to do it because they have to. Yeah. But if you say, hey. And then it'll only go, so, go for so long. Here's what, yeah, exactly. Here's what we're seeing. How do you think we should make this better? How can we fix it? How can we improve it? Mm -hmm. Get them involved because if they give you an idea and they say, hey, what if I was to do this instead? Boom, dynamite. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's try it and check yeah. back in. Hey, yeah. is that new thing we're trying working? Well, right. sort of, but here's the, okay, cool. Here's some, yeah. here's something I've done, right? Cause I've done their job and that's where I'm in a unique, uh, unique <clears throat> excuse me, situation here is that I've done all these kind of jobs. So I've seen it and the guys respect me for it. Cause they oh. know I'll be out there <clears throat> sweeping the shop or building equipment or doing this or doing that. And so, um, but yeah, involving people in the decision-making process is huge. Because yeah. you're affecting their everyday life. You might say, well, we need to hit this metric, this number in your business, right? That's sure. how we kind of look at things. And you right. go, well, what if I talk to them about it? How can yeah. we make this better? How can we improve this? How can yeah. we? And they yeah. know because they're doing the job every day. They're exactly. the ones talking to the customers. There's the ones that are interacting. So um, exactly. Yeah. Well, you've given us you've given us already a shot in the arm of energy. I hope the listeners paying close <laughs> attention because, man, you're moving fast and I love it. Um, usually, usually people have to tell me that I'm the shot of energy and that I need to slow down. I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm loving the pace that we're in right now. So, cool. uh, yeah, the, let's keep going. we, we've got, we've got you, you on this employee track, um, and it all comes to a culmination of actually solidify, be the employee kind of forever and ever, or go, go the route of chaos, potentially be able to buy in. Obviously you did, it's your business now. You've, you've got all these opportunities um, to be able to build your team. Would you say that that's been like, you know, my question of your best decision or your, or your quality decision that you can look back on that we can learn from, is that this in the process of building a team, give people a level of autonomy and care and, and focus on the positives, or did you want to add something different? Yeah, I, I think, I think it's a fantastic takeaway as far as a great decision. Of course, one of them is you know, don't, don't leave anything behind. Sure. You know, um, you know, don't be scared to jump in both feet. You know, life presents you with all these doors and you right. can choose to jump on through, or if you want, you can close it. Yeah. It's up to you. Um, and so I've just been jumping through open doors, man. And just learning <laughs> from everybody I can and just talking. And it sounds like I having can. a blast doing it. <laughs> Oh, it's so much fun. It's what I love. I love sharing knowledge. I love talking to people. You know, I've devoted 15 years of my life to water treatment. And if I can't talk to you about it for five, 10 minutes, gosh, what am I doing, man? Right. You know, um, I like to joke and say, hey, if you could find a question about water or water treatment that I can't answer, I'll buy you lunch. And I tell all my employees that, you know, people are into it. It's like, hey, I'll buy you lunch if you can find something. You'll get them looking, get them intrigued, yeah. get them to find out. Because what I love about water treatment is that you never know everything ever yeah, yeah. it's every day you can learn and so if yeah. you're receptive to learning maybe that's the other thing right being receptive to learning it's just yeah. uh and learn how you learn that's something that took me a long Good. time to find out is that how do you learn do you learn by listening to something do you learn by writing it down do you learn by typing it do you learn sure. by saying it out loud or right. whatever you know how, how do, you, do you learn by moving while you're talking right you know um so that's why I think I've been able to have a lot of success is I realized how I learned sure, and I can yeah. implement that tool to make myself more successful. So I can yeah, there's, remember there's things a, and stay on. Exactly. Like yeah. The psychological piece of not only just remembering it, but it becoming a discipline or a habit, right? Like um, uh, atomic habits <clears throat> talking about just changing your identity eventually. Right. So you've not only embodied the, the identity of what it means to know water treatment, but you, your identity is one of jumping through doors. Like you just said it casually, but that is genuinely what you believe. And it's also your identity, which I think every entrepreneur agrees with to a degree. We've all jumped through at least one set of doors. And, uh, and I think that the, the takeaway, like you said, is like, look, 
it's okay. Keep jumping. It's an, there's another one, and then there's another one, and there's another one, and potentially um, there's ups and downs in that. But um, through the process, uh, there there's more to have. I want to flip the coin on you though, William, because you've you've given me a lot of positivity, a lot of a lot of um, you know a lot of things have worked out because of this Y X Y Z. What hasn't worked? What was the bad decision that you can think of that we can learn from? Yeah. Uh, believing I knew what I was doing. And we okay. talked about it in the beginning, you know, uh, making kind of those mistakes of getting in sometimes like, oh, I, I know what this is, right? Instead yeah. of taking the steps that are normally there and going, hey, do I really know? Um, you know, I've made a tremendous amount of mistakes, but I think the mistakes are gifts. Sure. Because they always come with a lesson. Yeah. You always learn something. And so like, you know, thinking about this question, the mistakes made, it's like, well, gosh, if I didn't make that mistake, I wouldn't have gotten better. So was it a mistake right. Right. or is it just a nature of growing? Just a step in the process. You know? yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, learned a tremendous amount about California sales tax rules, <laughs> not because of one of my mistakes, but because somebody else's mistakes and it presented yeah. itself, you know, with an opportunity. Now I know a lot about it. And so it's great. Um, yeah. I think one of the things, the biggest lesson is in business, there's only hard lessons. Yeah. There's, you know, that's, that's pretty much what it is. You, and you can learn from it or you don't, but yeah. there's, you, you know, you got to really know, you got to kind of be the expert on a little bit of everything or know somebody, you know, right. get a good CPA, get a good little lawyer, get a good, these things, because you can mire yourself in those details of like reading a contract or something, or you have a guy who you trust, have yep. people you trust to be able to help. Yeah. And that's one of the things, huge. a mistake is I thought, you know, I got to read everything. I got to do all these things. I got to protect my business. Right. I got to hold on to it. And if yeah. I give it to somebody else, well, what if they make a mistake? Yeah. Well, find good people. And if you do a, a good job, good people seemingly come out the woodwork and you find them. And yeah. now you can trust them. And now you can, you know, move some of those eggs out of your basket, knowing that guy's got your best interest or that girl's got your best interest. Are those people have your best interest? Yeah. So yeah, trying to do everything, yeah. man. Yeah. Well, I, it, it, <laughs> as, as, uh, as, as encompassing as that is, obviously um, I love the, the, um, the scapegoat there, which is you have to be good at everything or, you know, somebody who is that you trust. And so um, I think that, those are two steps phase one and phase two if you even if you will of you know, we all think at the beginning we have we have to be good at it ourselves that's what's overwhelming and we're wearing too many hats and and things are confusing and we're working you know night and day and uh, until you can get to that place where you're like okay i i actually i'm gonna die <laughs> or i'm I, I so i need to i need to hand some of this off or i need to hire some key people or i need to find a cpa that i can trust or whatever it is it's just a different layer of thinking. Um, obviously, you know, stems very similar, similar to, um, to Henry Ford, you know, when he was under persecution and all that fun stuff of like, I can just hit a button on any part of my desk and uh, summon the right person with the right answer. Um, <clears throat> it is not necessarily about knowing the information. It's about knowing how to get the information and some of that's in our brain. And so you're hundred percent, right. I think that the, uh, the idea or the notion of being excellent is something that the listener should take away from you as well, because, you had the chance to go through all these different categories or divisions in your business. Maybe not necessarily every business owner has had that where they didn't have, you know, multiple years to, to kind of work on someone else's dime to kind of figure all this stuff out. But the reality is still the same is that you still got to do it with excellence. And so you either get in there and learn it and do it with excellence, or you hire it out. Like that's you, you've given us a, a very clear roadmap on that what about now? Like, okay, so you're successful. You got the, the, the great mustache, you know, for the listeners that are listening on Apple or Spotify, uh, you can't see this guy's uh, rocking mustache, but in all seriousness, you, you have a certain level of success. Now, what does a decision look like coming across your desk? Now you mentioned earlier, including people, especially your team members. Is there a certain process that you go through? Is there anything else you want to add to that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so important decisions. Yeah. Interesting. You bring this up. Um, so I think this is learning about yourself, right? I think the best when I'm doing something monotonous, right? Okay, yep. Is what I learned about my brain, right? When I'm sweeping the floors in my shop or I'm doing this or doing this, that's, that's just your body's doing it. You don't have to think right. about what you're doing. You're getting something accomplished, right? And so yep. I love accomplishing something simple, but it allows me to silence. No podcast, no music, no sound, no one's talking, right? Just think. Oh, 
the boss is working. So you get a little bit of like quiet, right? Because like what he's doing something out here in the shop or whatever it is, right? Right. That's when we can think when we turn everything off yeah. and you're stuck with your own thoughts. And yeah. I love that. And so I, I purposely try and give that to myself every day. So when we're talking about decisions. That's the thinking time. So yeah. I can think about it. I can come up with stuff. I can, what do I like? What do I not like? Where do I foresee this going, right? Yeah. And then it becomes, you know, uh, we could start joking, we call it throwing things against the wall. We'll just sit down and talk, talk it out. So we have something going on. We both know that there's whatever we're going to make a decision on. He thinks differently than I do, which is why we're such great, so great together. And yeah. so he'll think, I'll think, we come in and meet together and we just throw things against the wall, just throw them rapid fire. You know, yeah. what if we did this? What about that? What about this? And then you know, then what we do is we just shoot each other down. Here's what's wrong. Here's why it won't work. Here's why it's bad. Here's why it's not good. You know, here's <laughs> yeah. all the things that like all the negative, we want to get all the negative out. Yeah. So then we can go instead. Okay. What's left. Yep. And then of these, what's going to be the best can we for make us, it work? our business? Yeah. How can we make this work? And so that's kind of our decision making process that we've kind of come up with. And yeah. um, whether it takes an hour, or it takes four hours, you know, it, it doesn't matter yeah. as long as you get to the right, seemingly right answer. And then right. don't fall in love with your answer at the end of it. Because if you fall in love and this is the only way we can do this, well, now you're stuck and committed, but be adaptable, be pliable, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, yeah really, though. really good feedback. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you've got to be able to commit to getting the answer, but knowing that at the end of the day, um, it can it can change with the wind and, and it should actually right. um, that, you know, March of 2020 came and changed a lot for a lot of people, you know, so um, if we don't have that just identity of being pliable, like you're talking about, um, it just, you're just not going to, you can make it for a little while, <laughs> Yeah, but it's just, it's just not going to be uh, something that right. uh, turns into longevity. Yeah. You brought I want to switch COVID, over man. to, uh, oh. to our speed round here. You're, oh. uh, you're, uh, You've been in all these different departments um, yep. in your business and lots of things to track, I'm sure. But yeah. if you could only pick one thing to track forever and ever, what would that one thing be? It, if we're talking without a metric behind it, right? I think the one thing I would track is the success of my employees. And I have to talk to them. Sure. The culture. Right. Track the culture. Because I think that's how that's the most important thing. Because if the, the people, if your guys and gals and stuff working for you aren't happy, Right. That means your company's out there not doing things right. That means, that means they're running into people who maybe aren't so happy with our company. Right. Or maybe have had issues or maybe, you know, couldn't get somebody on the phone or whatever the thing may be. So yeah. to me, you know, that's what I would say. Talk to your employees. You'll find out everything you need to know about your business from them. And exactly. facilitate a culture in which they're okay talking to you. Love that. It's yeah. got to be a two-way street. Um, a partnership, yep. if you will. Um, even folks that uh, don't have actual partnership um you know there's got to be that that uh, that give and take and also too you mentioned it earlier just the autonomy it, when you give someone the ability to think for themselves or even in a situation with you um it 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 makes them come alive in a different way but it also it brings solutions that maybe you aren't aware of because you're not sitting in that seat every single day so i think that that's a, a huge piece of the culture um as well what book uh would you recommend william to a six-figure business owner trying to grow the business okay i thought long and hard about this and i narrowed it down to two all okay. right so one just because it was the most influential book in my life and i still okay. use it so wow. okay the, yeah um so precursing this when i became the salesman when i was i know sorry when i take a sales class at college and i talked to our salesperson here i said hey do you have because i had to read a book for the class and write about it. And he's like, do you yeah. have a book you can recommend? So he gave me a book and he said, I had, he's like, I know nothing about sales. I never had sold in my life. This is how he got in the water treatment. He got a job working for a competitor called Rainsoft. And he read this book and he said, I became the number one salesperson in the country. I'm like, that sounds like a good sales book. So I bought <laughs> it and I've been reading it for okay. 10 years now, if not longer. <laughs> how to Master the Art of Selling by Tom Hopkins. Oh, love it. Okay. Yeah. Old what's your, school. what's your one takeaway? Obviously it's, it's, it's served you well. You keep reading it over and over, but yeah. what, what's, what, what do you walk away with from that book? Cause I don't read it over and over again. What I did is I cheated and I made myself a cheat sheet 
So every time I read this book, and this is almost full, whole notepad, full. And what I do is I extrapolate things. Every time I just turn to random pages and start reading the book. Whenever it comes to me, I write it down. And this just gives me pearls of wisdom. So instead of having to go back to this book and go, what page was that on? What was this thing? I can find it and I still That's use right. it. That's and a it's little golden awesome. notebook. Exactly. You know, yeah, someone still takes this and it's the key to success. So, um, you know, for our business, a lot of what we're doing is sales based. Um, yeah, and, of course. you know, in, in about four years, we tripled revenues. We were the fastest growing Coligan by dollars, the only ever single Coligan dealership to do so in one year. Most yeah. people increase revenues by buying other Coligans. We beat sure. people buying other dealerships, other plumbing companies just on organic growth. Wow. And how we did that was just doing things differently, pushing, yeah. finding the right people, doing all these things. So that's book number one. I absolutely okay. love this book um, because it's just, it's been with me. Yeah. You know, it's been on my, it literally sits on my bedside table. I sleep next to it every night. My wife's on one side and my top. <laughs> uh, the other one, because it changed the way I thought was extreme ownership by Jocko Wilk. Great book. Um, it made me realize what it means to be a leader and what it means to be an owner and what it means to be somebody that people are looking up to and what it means sure. in your business right? Yeah. If something's not done, it's not their fault. It's mine. Right. If we screw something up, it's not their fault. It's mine. It's my fault. Yeah. Every so, time. and that right in the beginning, that can kind of be daunting because you're like, oh, oh yeah. gosh, everything's my fault. Like, I'm especially, doing especially wrong. when you don't think it is. <laughs> right, right, right. And, <laughs> and, and so it, it kind of just but I love about that idea is it morphs into so many things and it morphs into so many things for you. And you, once you take that mind chip, mindset of like, oh, this is my business. This is my, this is my things. And then, right, what I love to do is extrapolate that, no, this is not my business anymore. It's our business. It's mine and my employees. We take yeah. ownership of all this stuff. And if you have a mindset, that's the thing, man. Mindset is, can spread, right? Yeah. We've all worked somewhere where there's that toxic person, right? It's totally. that thundercloud that comes in and just, you're like, oh, great. This guy's here. here. here What's he going to complain about, right? Yeah, here it comes. And it drags everybody down. 100%. So for me, attitude is so important because if you get good attitude, it brings everybody up. And you can, yeah. work, that same thing that's just, that hampers stuff can also work the opposite. Yeah. And you can facilitate it. And then it brings everybody up with it and brings positivity yeah. to the group. So. Yeah, the ownership piece of that is the foundation. Um, the negativity or positivity or attitude is obviously the reflection of what they actually believe, whether they have ownership or not. <clears throat> and so I love, I love the the picture that you painted there. Um, I've done I've done strategy coaching, sales coaching, um, entrepreneurship coaching for for years, and it's like the one thing I just do not tolerate. I'm a pretty flexible person. As a leader, I think that you have to be. I think that you have to mold yourself in order to communicate well to other people. It's not their responsibility to mold. It's my responsibility to mold. But I'll tell you what, the one thing I just do not tolerate ever is what you're talking about. Negativity or lack of ownership. It's just like that. They just, the cloud that you just referred to, it just, it's, it can spread way faster than you realize. And uh, it does nobody any good, including the person that's delivering it. And so um, I think that you're spot on with that. Um, especially for the listener right now, they're trying to grow their business. They're trying to get momentum. Zero chance you get momentum if you have some or or at least if even one person on your team that, or you, you as the <laughs> entrepreneur, you may not have full ownership in your mindset, which leads to negativity and just this cloud. Like don't don't be the person. And then of course don't don't allow that person um, in and around uh, you, your family, your business, your your team members, your community, everything. Like excommunicate the negative. Oh, Anything 100%. There. There's a, a, a little quote from an automotive YouTuber. That's my, my, my passion is automotive stuff. And uh, I got TJ Hunt and he always says, keep moving forward. Yeah. Keep moving forward. Yeah. That's what it's about. Because once you start that forward trajectory and you get that momentum and that positivity, that success, and you have all the people moving forward too, it's a, it's a force. It is. You can't stop it. And, and it, it just starts unlocking things. You know, for us, it was just growth. We just grew and grew and grew. And how did we grow? Because we were focused on building relationships with our customers. Yeah. And why? Because all the competitors just want to sell you something. 
yeah. and then be done. But that's yep. not us. We're here to take care of you. We're, we have a service department. We have our route. We have this. We have all these things. You can call my company, hit the button for tech support, and my telephone rings. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can get somebody. My business partner, he's the one that does our in-home consults, you know, yeah. and and why? Because we both enjoy those aspects of the business. We both happen to be good at it, but sure. it's, it, it's, it's so important to, um, to generate that success. Yeah. Love it. Is to be kind of involved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got two last questions here for you. What, what do you intentionally, or what do you think about intentionally networking or masterminding with other entrepreneurs? Oh, I love it. I, okay. I, yeah, it's something that, um, we're, we're working more and more on every day. Okay. Because there's so much information you can learn from these people. Sure. They've yeah. been through the situations before. You might be struggling to find the answer to some question. And sure. you, 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 hey, you know, this, whatever, who it is, someone you know, you give them a phone call up, you know, yeah. and you talk to them and go, hey, have you ever seen this before? And they go, hey, you know what? Yeah, you're probably thinking about doing this. And you're like, yeah, that's what we're thinking. Like, don't do that. Don't it's the do worst it. thing you can do. <laughs> yeah, do this instead. So it's just. You're, yeah. you don't always have to have the answer. You don't have to always be the expert. You have to know where to be able to find it. Yeah, and that's, 100%. I think, a huge key. It's like just knowing where to find it. Because I don't know everything. I can't know everything. It's right. impossible. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. if I know somebody else who's good and somebody else is good and somebody else is good, now it's our communal knowledge. Now yeah. it's everything we have you know, to make ourselves better. Like I tell my employees, I want one day where I'm asking you questions and you're answering them because I don't know the answer. Yeah. That's when I get success. When you're better than me. Yeah. That's our goal. I want you better than me. Don't, you know, you're calling me now looking for answers on stuff or have this or have that, but sure. let's reverse these roles at some point in our relationship. Yeah. 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 And and like you said, whether that's with uh, team members, because I felt the same way about several of my teams where it's like, man, um, <clears throat> I don't know the answer to this, or I don't know where this is located and you have to ask. And, you know, someone new inevitably is standing there and they scratch their head and go, wait a second, don't, aren't you the owner? Yes. Um, but that's okay. Like, it's okay to have uh, strong people around you, including the other business owners. I love your perspective of being able to reach into their experiences and network. I think that that's the, that's the leveraging power of, uh, of a situation like that. Last question for you, William. All right. You're a pretty young guy. So maybe, I don't know, uh, uh, being able to kind of navigate this, but it's still the same question. If you could whisper... In the younger William's ear, what would you say? It'll all be okay. Don't sweat okay. the small stuff. You okay. know, um, being somebody who likes things to be perfect all the time, Got it. you'll find that's not going to be the case. And you, there's, there's things that are out of your control. And you can yep. make the best of bad situations and make, yep. um, you know, the 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 people I bought the business from, he had a parting words of wisdom, right? He said, and whether it's wisdom or not, I don't know. he said, have a drink every day at the end of the day to either celebrate your victories or to the pain of defeat. Sure. Because that's every day. Every day is a new day. Yeah. And there's no, there's so much stress in running a business and owning a business and employees and whether equipment's getting here on time or whatever the things are, there's all these things thrown at you, especially from, you know, this thing. Yeah, sure. And it's like to be able to turn that off, you know, and, and uh, be able to go, hey, that was today. I'm going to solve the problem. I'm going to make it better. We're going to fix it. You know, don't sweat it because there, yeah. there's an answer out there somewhere. And, you know, you can, you persevere. Tomorrow is going to be another day for to be able to be yeah. successful. Um, that's right. That's right. And so and I think that's, yeah, that's part of it. Just don't, don't stress it. Yeah. Our time is finite. We only have so much, right? All the other things we have is there's not a finite amount, but time is. Yeah. So we have to use every minute wisely because every minute that goes by is lost forever. It's lost to the ether. We're never yep. getting it back. So right. you can, you know, that's, it applies to a lot of things, spending, managing between work and, and home life, you know? Yeah. And one of the things that I've found, the busier I get, the more I value my time, the more I value my time, the more I value time with my kids, with my wife, with my family, doing these things. Yeah. you know, being ever present for all the things that we do. So, um, yeah, yeah it makes it's me think be of, okay. um, <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate the, the uh, humility there, but, but also just the perspective, because it makes me think of when I go elk hunting in the fall and, you know, you walked eight or 10 or 12 miles and you carried a big pack and 
And whether you had an opportunity to shoot or, or not, you're sitting down at the end. It's, it's been a full day. You're absolutely exhausted. Maybe you're on day three or four or five or six or 10 of just this repeated beating of, of the physical body and mind. And you eat some food and, and you think to yourself, well, tomorrow we'll do it again. Yeah. And, and that's really what it is. It's like, what I, I, it's done. Like I, I'm out of the woods, the sun's set. Like there's no more today in this situation. The only thing I can do at this point is get some rest and go out tomorrow and see what opportunities present themselves. And uh, so I yeah. think that that just highlights like, everything you just said um, and, and the mindset that you carry. Um, I want to know if, if someone listening today wants to connect with you, obviously if they're in your area and they need to get set up with some water treatment, of course, but, but yeah, what if yeah. they just want to reach out and find you? How can they, how can they connect with you? Indeed. I'm on Indeed. Yeah, okay. that's the best place. Uh, I'm not really on any other social stuff. I'm working towards that, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm on there. Um, oh, sorry, not indeed. LinkedIn. 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 Okay, okay. LinkedIn. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm 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 missing there, out here. Yeah. Is there a platform here on Indeed that I didn't <laughs> yeah. know about? I mean, goodness. I, I just realized I, I, the puzzled look on your face. Yeah, I'm like, LinkedIn. I'm I, I was there. letting you go with it. Um, I'm going, man. I'm missing something here. What? I'm going to ask him here in a second how that's going. Yeah. <laughs> If, yes, go ahead at, you know, LinkedIn. Man, yeah. Look at me there. If you got any kind of weird water stuff, water treatment stuff, then where you are in the country. And that's what I love and I love being part of. And, and um, if anybody's kind of in the industry, I just ran into a plumber who works in another state and we gave each other confirm- information because he's like, yeah, when I set up this and this, I have no idea what I'm doing. And I'm like, well, call me, I'll help you. And like, you know, and that's it's just one it of those things where um, I love helping people. I love, you know, being able to use my knowledge for good in the world and uh, and solving these problems. And if that means that somebody out there can make some money, awesome. Let's do that. Let's let's make money on this. So yeah, um, that's a that's a king mindset, man. Uh, you're you're exuding, you're exuding a lot of what uh, what we want right here on the show. Uh, you've been incredible with just sharing and and your energy, man, is infectious. Um, I can only imagine what it what it's like in your office to. To, to pound every day, which is, which is incredible. That's what, that's what it should be. Um, I hope that my, my folks feel that way about me. And I hope, I hope that uh, the listener has taken um, that simple one thing. I mean, there's been so many things you've dropped here today, but if they can take uh, how they feel personally right now, after listening to you away going, okay, how can they deliver that to their team? I think that they'll have learned probably one of the biggest things uh, there is in, in uh, the business journey. So yeah. Um, William, we just so appreciate you. Um, you're you're uh, an entrepreneur making moves, man. It's been fun to get to know you. I look forward to continuing the relationship. Blessings to your family, to your business, to your team, the whole deal. Thank you for being here. Oh, man, it's been my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been a great experience, you know, learning from you, talking to you, getting to know you a little bit. And um, yeah, it's a this moment I will treasure forever. So thank you for it. Absolutely. Thanks for listening to Gathering the Kings. We hope you got a ton of value today and learned a thing or two about taking your business to seven figures and beyond. If you desire more and want a community around you to help you get there, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. That's gatheringthekings.com. And I want you to apply for our next Becoming a King 90-Day Intensive. We are extremely exclusive by nature as a group. What that means is that we're really wanting only the entrepreneurs who take their business and targets super serious to apply. So if that's you, you think you got what it takes to level up your business, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com and apply. And we will see you on the other side.